Okay, welcome to our lecture online. In the previous couple of videos, we saw the case where we had no solutions and we saw the case where we had an infinite number of solutions. So now let's do another example of, of how we actually find a solution. We will find an, a value for x, y, and z that will satisfy all three equations by using the method of Gaussian elimination, which means we take the coefficients of the x, y, and z uh, uh, variables right here and put them in an augmented matrix. So that will then look as follows. We have a 4, a minus 3, a 1, a minus 2, a 1, and a minus 3, a 1, a minus 1, and a 2. So those are the coefficients of x, y, and z. And then we draw a line here. Don't have to do that, but I like to do that to separate it from the numbers we put in that are to the right side of the equal sign, the constants, a minus 8, a minus 4, and a 3. All right, now the objective is to take all the diagonal numbers right here and turn them into ones when everything else on the matrix here is a zero and then here we'll read the values for x, y, and z that satisfy that problem. So here what we're trying to do is find the x, y, and z coordinates of the point where all three, three planes meet somewhere in space. All right, so the first thing we want to do is make that into a one, but if we divide the first row by four, we already end up with fractions right from the first from the first step, we don't want to do that, so we're going to interchange row 1 and row 3, put this one up there so we get this one to be in that location. So what we're doing here is we're taking row 1 and row 3 and we're interchanging them. By doing that, we get a 1 here, a negative 1, a 2, and a 3. The second row stays where it is. And the third row then, the, the first row then comes down to the third row position and we get these numbers right here. And there's your new augmented matrix, which now has a 1 in the upper left corner, which we will use to turn this into a 0 and to turn this into a 0. We can do that by taking the second row and replacing it by the negative of that number, which is a positive 2, multiply times the row with the 1 in it, and adding it to the second row. And then here we take the negative of that number, so we take the third row, replace it by the negative of that number, negative 4, times the row with the 1 in it, and adding it to the third row. When we do that, we turn these into zeros, of course. We have to see what these numbers become as well, because we have to do everything the same for the entire row. So this becomes the following matrix now. The first row does not change. That's the row with the 1 in it. So we have a 1, a negative 1, a 2, and a 3. So for the second row, we take 2 times 1. That's 2 added to negative 2 gives me 0. 2 times a negative 1, that's a negative 2 added to 1, gives me a negative 1. 2 times a 2 gives me 4, added to negative 3 gives me a positive 1. And 2 times 3 is 6, added to negative 4 gives me a positive 2. Alright, next we deal with the third row. We take negative 4 times the first row, so negative 4 times 1, that's negative 4, added to 4 gives me a 0. Negative 4 times a negative 1 is a positive 4, added to negative 3 gives me a positive 1. Negative 4 times a 2 is negative 8, added to 1 is a negative 7. And negative 4 times a 3 is a negative 12, added to negative 8 gives me a negative 20. So now we're done with the first column, we have a 1 here and two zeros. Next step is to go to the second column, to the middle number right here, and that needs to be positive 1. So we're going to take the second row and replace it by negative 1 times the second row. So simply we're going to multiply the entire row by negative 1. When we do that, we get the following matrix. That means the first row doesn't change, and the third row doesn't change. And everything in the first row changes to the opposite. So we have a 0 here, that's a positive 1, that's a negative 1, and a negative 2. So now this is a positive 1, which we'll use to turn this into a 0 and to turn this into a 0. We can do that as follows. We take the first row and replace it by the negative of that number, which is a positive one, times the row with the one in it, which is now the second row, and adding it to the first row. We take the third row and replace it by the negative of that number, which, which is a negative one, times the row with the one in it, which is the second row, and adding it to the third row. And when we do that, we get the following matrix. All right, the second row doesn't change, so we get a zero, a one, a negative one, and a negative 2, and the first, in the first and third row, this stays a 1 and that stays a 0. All right, now we say we have 1 times 1 is 1 added to negative 1 is 0. 
1 times a negative 1 is a negative 1 added to 2 is a positive 1. 1 times a negative 2 is a negative 2 added to 3 gives me a positive 1. For the third row, I take negative 1 times 1 is a negative 1 added to 1 is 0. Negative 1 times a negative 1 is a positive 1 added to negative 7 gives me a negative 6. Negative 1 times a negative 2 is a positive 2 added to negative 20 gives me a negative 18. All right. Okay, now we're done with the second column. We have a 1 here in the middle, and those two are now zeros. We now want to make this into a 1. We can do that by taking the third row and replacing it by dividing the whole row by a negative 6. So basically, we're multiplying the row by negative 1 sixth. If we do that, then this will turn into positive 1. All right, let's go ahead and do that. And the matrix then turns into a following matrix. Notice that row 1 and row 3 will not change, so we have a 1, a 0, a 1, and a 1. The second row will become, or stay, to be a 0, a 1, a negative 1, and a negative 2. And then the third row, divide everything by negative 6, so we have 0, 0, a positive 1, and a positive 3. So now we know that this is a 1, and we have to change this into a 0, and change that into zero, and when we succeed with that, we'll be able to read our x, y, and z values. All right. We take the first row and replace it by the negative number, which is a negative one, times the row with the one in it, which is now the third row, and adding it to the first row. We take the second row and replace it by the negative of that number, which is a positive one, times the row with the one in it, which is the third row, and adding it to the second row. When we do those two operations, we get the following results. Now the third row does not change, so we get a 0, a 0, a 1, and a 3. The first row and the second row, this is still a 1 and a 0, and this is a 0 and a 1, so those don't change either. So now we go, negative 1 times a positive 1 is a negative 1, added to a positive 1 is 0. Negative 1 times a 3 is a negative 3, added to 1 is a negative 2. On the second row, it's 1 times 1 is 1 added to negative 1 is 0, and 1 times 3, which is 3 added to negative 2, is a positive 1. And now we are done, because notice we have 1's across the diagonal, zeros here and zeros there, so these are the values for x, y, and z. This means that 1x equals negative 2, 1y equals 1, and 1z equals 3, because this column represents the x values, the y values, and the z values. So basically the way you read this, you say that 1x plus 0y plus 0z is equal to negative 2. 0x plus 1y plus 0z is equal to 1. And 0x plus 0y plus 1z is equal to 3. Which means that x is equal to negative 2, y is equal to 1, and z is equal to 3. There we go. Which is the solution to this set of linear equations. And that's how we do that, using the method of Gaussian elimination. I like to call it the Gaussian elimination method. And that's how it's done.